In this video, we're going to look at callback functions in JavaScript. Before we go further, I want to talk about why functions are so special, um, powerful, and sometimes can be confusing in JavaScript. By knowing these things about functions, we can then, you know, understand better and appreciate callback functions. So the first thing is that functions are first-class functions, or sometimes you hear the terms first-class citizens or first-class objects. What does that mean? That means that first-class functions are functions that can be treated or used as variables, like data, right? And because they can be treated like that, that means they are also assignable to a variable. We call this function expressions. You've seen this quite often something like this where we assigned this function, an honest function, to a variable called fx, okay? And then also, functions can be passed as arguments. We call these the inner functions to another function, and that is called the outer function. So, for example, if I have a function called g of x, I could pass this function g of x to f of x like this. So, f of x g of x is now the inner function because it's going to be uh, invoked inside the outer function f of x. Okay? That is the first class functions. Functions in JavaScript are also known as higher order functions because they can operate on other functions. For example, functions can take other functions as arguments, as we see in example C right here. Another feature is that functions can also return a function back as the value, for example, in A here, if I pass g of x to this function f of x, it's going to return the function g of x back to wherever it's being used. Okay, so these two major features of a functions are true in JavaScript, and they are quite powerful and uh, very, very uh, useful. And so then, what is a callback function, right? That's our question. So let's go and take a look at the um, website over here I, I pulled out here on the Mozilla uh, website. And this definition pretty much explains what a function, a callback function is. So a callback function is a function passed into another function as an argument, which is then invoked inside the outer function to complete some kind of routine or action. So a function, a, routine, a callback function, is a function, in this case called greeting, pass into another function, the function process user input, right? We pass the greeting function to that as an argument. And this function in greeting is assigned to the callback variable. Of course, this is a function now, and we invoke that function inside the outer function here. Okay, that's what this means. Now notice we did not invoke the greeting function here. If you invoke it here, then it's no longer a callback function. Because once you invoke it, whatever this function does is the result of that passed to this function. And it may not be a function, it could be just pure data, right? Okay, so let's go back and uh, see some examples of how this works. So I'm going to go over to this file over here. And uh, I'll do as slow as I can just to make sure this makes sense to you. So let's create our first function. This will be the callback function. And uh, let's call this function f of x. It takes a data. And for this one, we're just going to return a message saying something like my name is. And then we're going to add the data to the end of that and return that statement back. Okay. Um, so let's have another function here. This is the g of x. This one here takes a data as well. And let's say this data is an array, and we want to print uh, the sum of all the elements in the array. Okay, so we can do that by using the uh, reduce function. Okay, so if you are familiar with reduce, so data to reduce, the reduce, as you can see, it takes a, a, a function, a callback function. This callback function looks like this, and it takes two parameters. The first is the uh, total. Or, or we're going to uh, put in here. So I'll put here um, the accumulator, which is total, really. 
The second is the current element in the array. So we put here cur, um, cur here, okay? Or cur element, make sure. And then what do you want to do with this function is you want the total plus the cur element. That is how you do sum. And the result of this will always be added to the total here again for each iteration. That's how uh, reduce work, right? And we don't have the third parameter, the second parameter, because um, we just want to start from the first element in the data, right? So we're going to then return the total back. That's a simple function there, go. And so here is our main function. This is the uh, higher, um, you know, order function. So let's just call it main, and we take um, those two parameters. One is going to be the data, and second is the actual function. I'm, I'll call it fn. Okay. And inside here, we do something really simple. We're just going to return the invocation of this function. We pass the data to that function. <clears throat> okay. So now this is our, our um, call so we're going to call the main function i'm going to pass to this function uh, a string say my name and then i'm going to pass the first function f of x notice again i did not invoke it if you invoke it it's no longer valid so you have to keep it like that because it'll be invoked inside the main function okay <clears throat> and so it returns the data back which is going to be hopefully this string and I'm going to console log that to the browser, though. OK. So let's save this and run our program. I want to do a um, configuration. I'm going to add this to the node JS. So I'll save this so I can you know, run every, this every time. So now I go and run. And it should be in the terminal and here. As you can see, the result comes back. It says that my name is Christian. Okay. Now you may be wonder. So what is the purpose of this? Because you could, you know, bypass this function instead of calling the function. You could just do something like this. You might say, well, I mean, instead of calling f of n, I can call the function f of x directly in here, right? Even if I don't provide this, it doesn't matter. But why not do something like that? I still get the same result, as you can see, which is OK, right? You probably be doing this uh, quite often already. Now, what is the advantage of this? So let's say that this main function only allows you this option to invoke that function. So if you don't have this option, if you want to invoke g of x, how do you do that, right? So that means, OK, well, this function doesn't work. You have to go in here and do some type of, um, you know, uh, changes. So, for example, I could change this to option, and then here I have to say if opt is equal to, you know, fx, then return that, right? Else, you know, return the gmx data like that. And then when you pass, you pass this as a string to that option. And so if I see, you can see that now I go and run. I mean, uh, I'm going to get that one. If I pass in the g of x, it doesn't work. I have to pass in data. So for example, let's duplicate this. And I pass in a list of data, one, two, three. And I call it in the g of x and a run, right? You can see that it works in both cases, OK? So this will only works for g of x and f of x. What if I have a third one? What do you do then, right? So you can see how you can keep adding more stuff to your main function, and eventually these become very bloated and really, really hard to maintain. So the callback function resolves this issue very beautifully. So I don't care about you know checking what type it is. All I know is if I pass in the function, I can invoke it in here. Okay, so you can see that now if I go back and just change that to the function name, I pass to that as the argument, and the result will come out very beautifully just as this. Okay, all right, that is the advantage of a callback function. 
Now, you are limited to just one parameter, of course. You can always design this so that it has more parameter use things spread operator. But let's say if you do have this and you have another function, a more complex function that maybe, you know, has some objects in there. So let's say we have another function up here. Um, call it h of x and it takes the object in this case. Okay, what do we want to do with this object? Let's say that I'm going to call this function again. I'll just duplicate this. And I'm going to pass to this function the h of x. The, the data is going to be an object. And the first one is, let's say, a1 is an array of 1, 2, 3, 4. The second is, is also going to be an array of uh, 5, 6, 7. And then I'm going to pass in the function. I want to pass in the g of x function to itself, right, to this parameter. And I'll use this g of x function to add these two arrays together, return that to the console. Okay, so now I still use the same main function, one parameter for the data, the h of x function here, invoke the data here. Once the data goes here as an object, then it's really up to me how to, you know, operate this h of x. So I can do something like, okay, so that data is going to be obj dot a1. I'm going to concatenate that first with the obj dot a2. So I got my data as an array. And then I'm going to invoke the obj dot um, g of x, I pass to that the data. So I'm invoking this function here, basically. And then I'm going to return the result back. Okay, so now you see that it works just like before. If I return run it now, I got three results. So the complexity gets, uh, um, you know, makes it really kind of easier, actually, if you think about it. And if these functions are, of course, reusable, then you can leave it out here. If they are not reusable, it's only for one purpose, you can move that function right in here and just put the function right here as the anonymous function, which, which is also quite common. Okay, so let me just do one more thing and which is kind of uh, um, interesting as well. So notice that I have to console log these result to the console. You know, what if you just, you know, you get the result and then you print the result right away. And this is one other option that you can also chain methods to your function as well. So you can do something like the following. Let's say I'm going to go in here and modify my main function. Okay, and I'm going to return that. I'm going to invoke my function in here. We'll say we'll let data, um, or I'm just going to use the same data. Uh, data is equal to the f of n dot data. So I got the result, right, itself. I got the result here. And then I'm going to add a property called done. This is going to be assigned to a function. Um, this function will take one parameter. I'll just call this um, the f, um, I'll call it g of n for another function. And this function will, well, all it does is basically, well, you know, instead of g n, let's, let's call it callback or something. Okay. It's a callback function. And all it does is we're just going to return the invocation of this callback function, we pass the data to that. Now this data is really this data. Let's, I mean, we, maybe we call it new data or something. Let new data. It's not too confusing. I pass this new data to the function. Now, when I pass this callback function from the done uh, property, after you invoke this function first, I know it's confusing, but you see. So now, so instead of doing this way, I'm going to remove this and then I will chain that to the end of this function, the done method. Okay, so now I'm calling, I invoke this part first, I got that result back, and then now I'm going to pass to this done method here, which is chained here now. And then what I need, I need a, uh, a, it's a callback function. So this is a callback function. As you can see, it's called a function. And when I return it, as you can see, it takes one parameter. So 
I need to receive a parameter, I call it data. And then this function, all it does is maybe just say a console log, um, yeah, result, and then we'll put the data here. Okay, so all it does is print the result to the console. Oops. Okay, so these two are no longer working because the way this is done. So I'm going to, I'll leave it as you can see, but it's, it's not going to be working. When you run it now, um, yeah, let's, let's turn this off. Um, this won't work. And, oh, I forgot to return it. You have to return the function back, okay? Return the function back as the function back to this main function. So <clears throat> here we go. You get the result. It says the result is the actual data return. So now what I did was basically remove the console log and, you know, chain a property to the function f of n that has been returned when I call this function. So this part here really is the same as um, f of x. Because I pass an f of x, it goes in here, I return the same function back. So this whole thing is actually f of x. And you can see that if I do this, f of x dot done, and I put here um, data is equal to console log. Well, here f x, so you can see the data, right? They they have produced the same result basically. We see that here. Okay, so as you can see, it's the same thing because I call that here. And if you don't want that, then you make this the anonymous function, then this won't work anymore. Okay, so you can do that same here. I can also chain this to the done function. I get the result back as well. So you can see the power of callback function being used this way. This way it takes a little, little while to, you know, kind of wrap your head around it, but um, this is quite powerful. So now with this said, let's go and take a look at something that's more practical, something you might already seen a million times in your code. So here is the HTML that really just uh, has a button and uh, the output looks like this a button here when i click the you know button it's going to call and put some data to the console and we're going to use that something you're already familiar with called the event listener so here i can go in here add a um, constant btn is equal to document dot get element by id the id is i think i called it uh, click me. Okay, so click me. And there it is. I target that now to add event listener. We do btn dot add event listener. It takes the click event and this is the callback function right here. So again, this is the callback function. You can put an E here for event if you want to. You don't have to put it. And then this function is invoked by this function at event listener when you click this button otherwise you just stay there okay so this being called at a later time whenever you need it so here let's say we're going to just console log to the message um you clicked me okay very simple like that you've probably seen this again uh, just to make sure it does work and then there it is you got the message Okay, so I'll do one more example and then we'll be done with this video. So here I have a data called json.data. Let's say I want to get this data using a, a, a you know, Ajax call. So I'm going to do writing here. Okay, I'll use the fetch method. I'm fetching the data.json. You've probably seen this already. And you can see that it changed to a then function. And then another then function. And then you can also catch the error here. Okay, you see the chaining method here. So this function, when you call this, it's going to fetch the data asynchronously, and it's going to invoke either this or this. Okay, this one here is dependent on this one. If this is successful, then it will invoke this one. If there's no successful uh, result, then it's going to skip all both of these and call this instead. So the then function here takes a callback function like I did here, right? It takes a callback function just like this callback function and it does something and returns the data back. For this one, the first then here 
it takes a callback function and return a response. And so you're basically um, going to return the response in a different format of the data that contains in the body. This one here is like coming back from the back end. If you're familiar with Node.js application development, this is like how you send the data back to the browser through the response.json uh, function. Okay. If you want to return as a text, you put text here. Okay. So that means you're going to fetch the data, return this as a JSON. So I want to use JSON. And then now it's going to trigger the next then function. This then receives the actual data, the result. And we can then just console log to the browser console. So you can see if, if, if it fails, then we're going to call this function. It's going to receive a data, usually error message. And you can console log that to the browser as well. We put here error and it will pass in the error message. Okay. Put here just like that. Maybe here we'll put here success. Okay. So here we go. And let's save this, go to the browser and see what happens. So here we go. And it goes really quick. Um, yeah, here we go. You see that it loads the first console and it's a success. So we're able to retrieve the data coming back beautifully. Okay, if we do it again, okay. Now, what if I go back in here and accidentally uh, alter my file, I'll put a comma here, which is no longer a JSON file. You can see it's a red thing here. And then when I try to fetch it on the browser, you can see that we get the error, which is the catch one instead. It tells you what the error message is. So that is the power of callback function, guys. And again, this is asynchronously. Okay, how do you know that? Well, you can do uh, something like this, you know, um, before they fetch, you can go here and type in something, um, you know, say console log done, right? And if I go back, you will see that done is printed before the fetch, right? Even though my code was actually uh, uh, coded in, in a different order. So this is asynchronously this and this are synchronous but anyways i want to uh, just show you that usually these callback functions are very common and very popular in asynchronous calls such as this this is a function okay that is sent to the then function the then function invoke this function and returns back the data and so you can process the data here whatever it is same thing here and here okay if you look at other web APIs like Promises, Ajax, uh, many others have this very similar uh, structure. So now that you understand how callback functions work, they can be really useful and functions in JavaScript are always first class and higher order. Thank you for watching. Any questions you may have, feel free to post here or any recommendations also are welcome. Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video.